Hey guys, welcome back to another video on the Inside Spurs channel. Happy Thursday afternoon. Hope you're well. Hope you're looking after yourself. And, uh, well, the day's going as good as it could do. Um, obviously, in the last 48 hours, obviously signing Timo Werner. I'm just basically waiting for the official announcement on uh, Radu Draguzin. I assume it will probably be sometime this afternoon into the evening that the announcement video and all the shirts and pictures and all that jazz comes out. Um, but it's also a time to sort of reflect on... A long-standing player that is leaving. And you look, you've seen the title, you've seen the thumbnail. It's Eric Dyer, and he's going to Bayern Munich. So we'll talk a little bit about that, as well as a really interesting development around an ex-player that might be getting Spurs a few extra quid. You'll see what I mean shortly. Just want to say, if you're new, subscribe. You're very much welcome to join us for the journey. And let's talk about Eric Dyer. So let me let me first give you what Florian Plettenberg said. He said, exclusive news, Dyer done deal. He will join FC Bayern. He's already arrived in Munich now. Agreement between the two clubs and the medical is today. So it does look like that Eric Dyer is finally getting his move to Bayern Munich. So first and foremost, congratulations to Eric Dyer for a, for a really great move in his career. You know, he gets to go off to experience another culture. Bear in mind, he's come from Portugal. He gets to experience another culture. He gets to rejoin Harry, which is always a, a nice thing as well. But also he gets to really have a great chance of winning a lot of silverware. And if he does well, you know, if you're the starting centre-back and you're playing really, really well for Bayern, then that England call-up can actually come around with more hope and, and chance, which it doesn't look like he was going to get that England call-up potentially in, uh, for Spurs. If he plays for Bayern, it's it's more than likely. Um, so, yeah, really happy for him and, and a really good move. Obviously, for Spurs, um, obviously getting a fee, creating a new squad spot for someone else, which is always quite nice. Um, but also, just want to... You know, I think a lot of people are kind of saying, get die, go and get this gone. Now, I've always said about certain players that they're good players, but <clears throat> don't suit Andrew's system. And there's nothing wrong with that. There really isn't. You're not you're not saying they're bad players. You're not taking a dig at them. You're just saying they're good, but not for this system. And Eric Dyer is one of those. And he's been a very loyal servant over his time at Spurs. He 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 got what Spurs was all about. He really did. He um, you know. You see all the interviews from the past. You see him, you know, see him sticking up for teammates. You see him being a bit of a leader. And yeah, don't get me wrong, the last 18 months maybe hasn't been the best or the best part of his career. But I also remember times where, you know, the reason he has so many England caps is because he was very, very good in, in, in the Spurs team. You know, playing at centre midfield, playing at centre-back, playing at right-back gave you countless games of, of quality. And, you know... It, it will be one of those that it's sad to see him go, like it was sad to see Deli Ali go or anyone like that. Harry Kane, I'm t keeping to a certain area to himself, but it was right to see them go. There's nothing wrong with that as well. Harry, wish we could keep him, but the other, you know, it was right to see these guys go. And I really hope Eric can rediscover, you know, what made him so great. And I really, I think he will do well at Bayern. Um, it's a, it's a hell of a move for him, and I'm really happy for him. Um, Romano said that Bayern and Spurs are now exchanging signed documents for Eric Dyer's permanent move. It's all done uh, for the fee in the region of four million euros. Also, medical almost complete. It's official soon. So yeah, bit of German efficiency there. That they've pretty much, they'll probably much have it all done in one day. And Spurs are still working on uh, Dragoos. And but yeah, no, really good move for him. Really happy for him. And. Um, yeah, you will, will, will at Spurs fans probably have to keep an eye on Bayern Munich games a little bit just because of the two lads that have gone there. So happy days for him. And uh, yeah, we look forward to what's coming with Spurs. And obviously we still got uh, just under three weeks left of the window. So plenty of time still in this window. Um, plenty of work still to do. There's guys that we still need to to move out. You know, you think of a, a Regulon maybe, for example, we need to obviously move him out. Obviously, we've moved Dyer, we've moved Jed Spence. You know, there's still a couple of place, a couple of people that maybe you might move on. Obviously, Brian Hill still has interest from Fiorentina and Feyenoord. You know, on, like I said. But I think you'll probably find the next move comes in the midfield, unless something really crazy pops up in other areas. But I think the next midfield number eight position, and that will be a one in one out scenario where if you're getting in someone. Pierre Hoiberg has to go somewhere else. That's the way I think it'll be. Not, by the way, not that he's been forced out the back door. It's just Spurs will Spurs will want to use the money they get from him to buy someone else, right? 
But let's talk about some money that might appear that we didn't expect. And I've always talked about sell-on clauses being a very interesting thing. But I've been catching wind of West Ham at the moment, right? Now, follow me. And West Ham have an interest in three ex-Spurs players. Steven Bergvine is one at Ajax. You also have Jack Clark. Do you remember him? The guy who's, got, who's went to Sunderland and sort of rediscovered form, rediscovered and, and developed quite well there. And also Marcus Edwards. I've seen that link pop up as well. Now, we know Marcus Edwards, I think it's released cause about 60 million euros. And we know we've got 35% on that. So it'd be around about 20 odd million to, to, to bring in from that. But also Jack Clark, Spurs own, it's, it's somewhere between 25 and 30% of Jack Clark's sell-on. Now, I don't truly know how much Jack Clark will be sold for, but, you know, it's not going to be 10, 15 million, I don't think. I think it'll be a bit more than that because he is such a massive part of their team. Plus his English, the English tax is already 10 million alone. So Sunderland might want 25, 30, knowing that they have to sell him on sorry, they have to give a sell-on fee to Spurs of 25%. So if it's 30 million, Spurs might get six six million pounds out of that. And this is the thing as well. If, let's say, one of them does get sold, Spurs might go, so if we sold Hoiberg for like 20, and we've got six million from Clark, we put another 20 million down. That could look like a Conor Gallagher. I'm not saying it would be, I'm just hypothetical. You know, if you want to look at, some of you have mentioned Eberich as a, you know, if you, if you do that, you probably going to have to put down an extra 50 odd million to get him which yeah I don't see that one happening um but no I always thought it was all quite interesting that Spurs could still raise funds from other clubs activities which I think is really important to keep an eye on because Edwards Clark and Bergvine are all players at West Ham and have an interest in um Clark would I'm just thinking who would be the easiest of them all It'd be Bergvine or it'll be, uh, well, it'd probably Bergvine, I think it's the easiest deal to do, but it'd be Bergvine or Clark. I think Edwards is a more difficult one, especially because Edwards costs a lot more. I think you could probably get Bergvine and Clark for the same amount of money you could get Edwards for, just because I think Sporting Lisbon are one of those teams that they set uh, a release course, which is a tad bit high, but not outrageous, and then they'll want you to sort of buy on that. So just wanted to bring that to your attention, so, something to really keep an eye on. Um, Potentially might have a video out later, obviously, hopefully, talking about Redu Jaguz. And always, there was an also a really good report, that I, an article that I wanted to talk about around how Ange might be getting a lot more than uh, a lot more than we all think. You want to kick, back around, kick around for that one. But anyway, guys, the end of it. Hope you did enjoy it. Drop a like on the video if you did. Hit me in the comments section. Your thoughts and feelings about Eric Dyer. Give me some nice things. You know, he's, he's going. He's, he, he's been a loyal servant for the club. Want to know some nice things. Obviously, your thoughts and feelings about potential sell-ons and raising funds from there and where it may go. Subscribe to the channel if you're new and hit the bell notification for more. But anyway, guys, in the video, I'll see you all very, very soon. Take care, guys.